Hello and welcome to Academic Coordinates. Today we are joined by a member who will be telling us more about his journey as a student as he holds a degree in development studies. He actually holds his master's degree and he will be telling us more about how he got to that place. Remember, how are you? I'm good, ma'am. Thanks. And how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so who are you? What kind of person can you describe yourself as? Where are you from and how did you grow up? Yeah. <laughs> wow, and I always tell people that, you know, if there's one difficult question, it's answering who are you? Yeah. It's not a difficult question, very much ambiguous question. But nevertheless, I'm just um, a young boy grew up, who grew up in like in villages. Uh, I was born in Rotterdam, in a village called Rotterdam, and then I, one way the other moved and then that's why I started my primary as well, a bit of my, my, my high school too. Yeah. Uh, and then I moved to another village, it's, it's a village too, called Dian Magoro. Then that's when I completed my my metric there. And then, yeah, from there, and then I went to the University of Venda around 2012, 2013. Then up until 2015, that's when I did my BA yeah. in development study. From there, and then I went to the University of the Western Cape. I did honors in development studies. And now I'm as well like uh, doing my master's in development studies at the University of the Western Cape. So remember, it's just like a simple young boy who grew up in, in, uh, in villages and who as well was passionate about education as well, reaching greater heights. So that, that, that's me. So are there any other interesting things that you'd like to tell us about your upbringing and um, just the way you grew up? Uh, interesting thing. Uh, I would say, like, you know, I was one, 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 you know, grew up in a family where there was livestock. So we grew up, like, you know, <laughs> grew up helping livestock. So that's one, <laughs> that's one of the things, possibly, when you are a young, young boy, then grew up around the war in 19 something, 19, 19 uh, possibly between what, 2000 and something like that. Then there was still some, you know, cattle and goats that you have to go and help and then you go and stay at the bush for almost all day and then they come back home after school and all those kind of stuff. So that's the, that's the kind of person that is hired. So people, if they see you today, they might think that, you know, this person is just, you know, we just fell from heaven, but that's not true. <laughs> Wow, that is so interesting. Actually, I would love to know how that is like, but obviously, I'm grown up now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what can really? you tell us about just your school life? Um, what kind of student were you in school? Who did you hang out with, and what were you known for? Oh, my school days. Like, uh, I was a like you know, studying. I don't want to say that. You know, one way or the other, I grew up like being a good kid. Yeah. Um, one way or the other, I was kind of that kind of person who like to who like a bit of a competition. You know, if there are very wise people around, you know, intelligent students, then uh, I one way or the other want to compete with them. Just want to you know boost one way or the other. I recall when I was still doing grade, um, was it grade four? Yeah. Um, I used to stay at the back though. But uh, the interesting part of it is that I once scored uh, in mathematics, so scored like 100%. So I was so much happy then uh, by then. So, <laughs> so that kind of student who was so much competitive, like, you know, like, like competition, where there are people who can pull me to be the better version of myself. So that kind of student I was, and as well, uh, I like, 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 run, like, you know, those front seats, I like them so much. Yeah. But one way or the other, we grew up like, you know, not saying that we are saints. But before we knew the Lord, someone was just a troublesome one way or the other. You know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, but the moment somebody like, get to, to, to be born again and decide, then a lot of things change in someone's life. Yeah, that's true. Now, take us to your grade nine here. Just that transition from grade nine to grade 10. Um, how did you choose your subjects? To tell you the truth, ne, uh, one way or the other, I, I, I really say that if you don't have an exposure around people who can guide you, especially when you have to choose those kind of subjects when you transition to grade 
to grade 10, I feel like, you know, sometimes not having that kind of support as well within like uh, the family or um, possibly people who can be of help and to tell you about more, more special about the future to say that these are kind of subjects that you can choose and this is what it has and entails for you and as well leads for you one way or the other. I feel like I never had those kind of people. So um, sometimes because of prejudice and everything growing up, peer prejudice and all those kind of stuff, I end up choosing uh, the stream of history. So I, I did history. I wouldn't say that possibly was a bit of my strength uh, because I wonder that I liked mathematics. I know I liked numbers so much a lot that one way the other girl was I wouldn't say that I was there, you know, the top of the range, but I, I, I did much, much, much more better when it comes to numbers. So I, I was so and someone who liked numbers. Nevertheless, I, I chose history. That's what I, I studied uh, from grade ten up until grade twelve. And uh, yeah, that has been my stream. Um, what other subjects did you take apart from history? Okay. I think I did history, I did as well, I think biology, but I never liked biology. Yeah. <laughs> My great time, I did biology. Uh, I did geography. I think like I, I, I changed biology when I did my grade 11. So I had to do tourism. Uh, yes, I did tourism, like history and geography. This is the stream that I did. And as well as as much and more, someone's eyes open and understanding more what you want to do, then I think a lot of things are becoming more and more clear about that. So that's why I chose these kind of like streams. So um, while you were in high school, what did you envision yourself doing when you grew up? Uh, to tell you the truth, I wanted to become a lawyer. I was so much passionate about being, being a lawyer. It's unfortunate that like when I, I finished my grade 12, um, I couldn't manage to one way that a secure space at the varsity. Uh, and that's like for that, that reason of saying that you don't have people enough around you who yeah. can possibly help you. And as well, when it comes to applying in time as well, helping you choose careers and all this kind of stuff. So I end up doing like late applications and with late applications are very much active. And as well, not having that kind of family to say that, okay, it's still okay to take a gap year, you know, instead of you being thrown into a varsity to say that you have to be in varsity just because you completed grade 12. But taking a gap year as well, it's a good thing just to you know, reflect and as well so that you understand really much well what you want and as well to possibly, if you have been reached that standard, so that you can possibly one way or the other work on reaching that standard so you can do whatever you want to do. So as for me, I wanted to do law there's been in me and sometimes when I sit down as I, I, I even envisage like you know see myself being a lawyer one day or somehow but one way or the other because of a lot of things and how like someone has grown academically um, uh, it, it, it's, it's a lot now but uh, I wouldn't say that I, would, I wouldn't rule it out but I was still one way or the other one to pursue it in the near future oh wow um so uh, in your high school days what other things were you involved in apart from just your academics okay i i was you know my, my high school days i think were involved in uh, these uh, student organizations church organization i think that's one thing that i was was involved in and uh, soccer too so I, I i i used to like playing soccer <laughs> so those are kind of stuff which i was really really, really much interested in, uh, in doing in my high school days yeah so um we're leaving high school now we're going into university tell us about that yeah. transition from high school to university a very hectic one eh? very very much hectic not an easy one and if someone doesn't have people around him who possibly can help him to navigate that 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 space you might find yourself uh in wrong sides of of life and possibly finding yourself choosing the wrong friends as well choosing you know wrong companies which might one or the other destroy yourself even even your your purpose of you being in that space but it was not an easy thing um to say but i, I one way that i thank god that you know when i got to that space you know, especially around vendor i i found people who one way that they helped me to 
discover a lot of things about myself, uh, help me to navigate the space, help me to to you know to be able to 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 conquer whatever was there. You know, challenges of being a first year student, not an easy thing. Yeah. But uh, I managed, you know, yeah, I managed a lot of lot of things by God's grace. I, I wouldn't say that I wasn't so much I was so much wise to navigate a lot of things, but though it was so much depressing in me because I wanted to do law and then I couldn't do that. So it was so much depressing one way or other. I could say that my first year, though I, I did a lot of things, you know, I enjoyed, but the fact that I could see, you know, law students, one way or the other, I usually usually used to picture myself in those kind of you know, you know, you know, gowns and all this kind of stuff, doing whatever those guys they were doing. So it was one way rather depressing because it was a, a constant reminder that this is what you wanted to do, this is what you wanted to do. But it was not an easy thing. But I, I believe that, you know, with with the help of the people that were around me, family as well, and some of my friends, then I managed to to pull through first year. And it was it was a great it was a great time. And if I would say that was my best time ever on when it comes to varsity life, I, I will refer back to University of Vanda, you know. <laughs> wow. So yeah. what specifically motivated you to choose um, the institution that you chose? Ah, uh, there's nothing which motivated me. To tell the truth, nothing at all. It was just the matter of saying that, you know, being pushed by the firm too that you need to be at varsity. <laughs> you need to be at varsity and um, uh, and one way or the other, that that University of Vienna was the very closest, uh, and, um, and and that's that's one. When I got there, then did late application, they had to take me in this program which I'm doing now, development studies. Yeah. So I wouldn't say there was anything much like motivated me. Uh, there was there was nothing at all, and that exposure too of seeing that being exposed to kind of universities like oh UCT, Stellenbosch. Uh, UJ, those kind of things were not there, you know, as well. Ca- the career guidance was so much lacking as well in our high schools. So we're not, we, we did not receive that exposure. People who knew enough, who Paul possibly could have assisted one to choose uh, right, you know, possibly universities, applying time and do all those kind of stuff. We, we never had those kind of opportunities and help. So I, I feel one way or the other, it's, it disadvantaged me, uh, you know, to, to be able to have chosen whatever the institution I did. So then, um, what motivated you to choose the course that you chose? Uh, like, like, like I said that that was not what I wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, so it's something which, you know, when I did that little application, they had to say that's where the space is. And then I, I chose that one. Though, like, someone had a choice of saying that, okay, I can drop these things and not do it. Possibly second year and do whatever you wanted to do. But um, as time goes on, I, was, I wouldn't say that I, I, I grasped much of uh, what was it all about at my you know, undergrad. But there's something which one way or the other you know, decided to say, let me go for honors on this thing. So, but, so that I can be able to understand very much well. And when I did honors, I, I can tell you that I gained a lot of knowledge, you know, I, I saw a lot of things and then perspective changed and you understand what is it all about, understand the importance of the study itself when it comes to development in large of countries and as well the farewell of many countries. So it it, it, it opened my eyes and then it sparked that kind of you know interest in me and as well the passion to say this is something which one way or the other someone can make part of it. And, can contribute you know, greatly to the community and, and the world and as well the economic world and to the country in life because it's it's a very great study I, w- I wouldn't lie about that you know it's as much as important as medicine is it's as much as important as uh, law is so if we don't have specialities who, who understand the dynamics of of the social economics what we're going through as the country that knows them and comes with solutions you know innovative solutions that we, we we are not going anywhere we are not growing and and that's what we are all about as development you know developmental studies students so i know you just touched on this um but yes. 
just in simple terms, what is development studies all about? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know this, this is another one question as well. People always ask me, when they ask me what I'm doing, I tell them you do all study. They want to understand you know, what is it all about. Yeah. But it is, it's, it's more based on, you know, policy making, research, um, and, you know, diagnosing social economic challenges like poverty, like, you know, doing much and better empirical research to as well find the solutions and as well with, uh, you know, empirical data to understand and as well recommend policies to the government uh, so that they can make, you know, informed decisions when it comes to as well distribution of their budgets and as well their planning, strategic planning for, for the development of the country. So it's that's the broader understanding and as well the picture of what development studies is all about because it's part of the understanding the social, what why people do whatever they do. You know, there are reasons behind what people do, what they do, and how people behave. So with social, social, you know, with these development studies, you know, and introduced to you the policies of social transformation, helps you to understand and as well interpret the, the surroundings and the behaviors of people so that you can be able to, uh, you, know, in, you know, make those kind of informed decisions and policy making and all this kind of stuff through research. I know you went to two different institutions, um, but yes. where would you, apart from the ones that you studied at, um, which other institution would you suggest that um, someone who also wants to study development studies can go? Uh, in South Africa, I think UCT is, is best when it comes to offering development studies. So they are ranked in the, like, you know, in the world. So. That's why, like, you know, I came to understand with development studies so much important that to a point that if it's ranked like one of the South African institutions, like UCT, as one of the Africans best, you know, their their course when it comes to development studies is ranked worldwide. Almost I think it's in top ten. So it means how important these studies is. So if many people can be exposed to it, understand it and study it, then it will definitely benefit our country, you know, and our continent in a very greater in a greater margin. So I would recommend UCT, it's one of them. Stellenbosch, I do believe they have it. It's it's one of them too. UWC where I study, we as well, you know, we, uh, it's it's very much great. The content is absolutely amazing. So, and then vets, they do have it too. Um, I wouldn't want to one way or the other this and then you know this this kind of like you know disqualify uh, the university of vendor but i feel like the content there you know it might those it's, it's not really that much uh, as compared to other universities how they offer it I, I wish like there could be more content after one has gone through honors level and then master's level now you understand as well, what possibly kind of modules and the content they can put in to make it a point that uh, when one graduates, then you, you have a broad understanding and a deep understanding than what ourselves we got from 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 whatever we did. So those are kind of universities that I can recommend. Someone can you know can can apply with for you know to, to study development studies. So UCT it's 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 from the top, I I, I think. So um, what kind of person does it take to study development studies? Um, what kind of personality should you have? Or what kind of interest should you have in order to do well in this field? Uh, what I would say is that um, you should be a person who, who want to see change in, in, the, like, you know, in the lives of people. You want to see change and, and you want to see people you know, improving. You want to see lives improve because that's what it's all about when you speak about development studies. You want to see people coming out of poverty. You want to see a better education. You want to see, you know, people, uh, for, for instance, those who are suffering from hunger. You want to see policies, government making policies which are conducive enough for development and, and as well pull many people out of poverty and, and makes our life and our world a better world to live in. If you don't have an interest of you know the social economic 
in you to 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 see people better living lives in a different manner in you know, tackling challenges and you know which we are encountering daily then uh, it might be very much difficult for you to be to be to be doing this kind of thing but if you are so much interested in improving the lives of people and then so much interested in seeing that the government you know they they implement policies which speaks to our realities daily then you are you, that, those are qualities that you need you don't you don't you don't need much those are qualities that you need and as well you must be somebody because i, I believe it's a lot of research based work and a lot of reading so you should be somebody who's much more into reading and as well you know interested in research because research can be so much daunting to a point that you know you just have one idea which you want to explore and if you're not so much into it then you might find this so much difficult for you to to live and do it so um what kind of other activities were you involved in um apart from your academics um now it's in your tertiary career okay i because like what we have if, if, if there's one mistake that I, I ever did in my undergraduate it was not to mostly be involved in uh the, the activities which were happening on campus it might be politically uh, affiliated or other societies within the campus life i think that's the, the greatest mistake i ever did you know i was doing kind of kind of person was it i want to don't want to be involved in this thing but they want to i just want to do my academics and church that's that's what i want to do but i saw that it was kind of like a stereotype kind of mindset and it was so much wrong of me because uh the, the kind of a course that i do itself it leads me to engage with people it leads me to be so much informed of what is happening around and as well to understand uh the dynamics and the dilemmas and the, the predicaments of people so that we can be able to solve them nevertheless what i'm doing like what i was now doing also be still involved in it i i got to be involved in um uh, in uh, you know in, 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 in the radio on campus yeah to be the voice as well of students uh advocating for some of the challenges and speaking our own you know speaking from our own perspective and as well informing students with whatever is happening and whatever is going on in the world on campus yeah so that's what i was involved in uh Got like you know radio on campus, the the, the the media society, and there's as well some other entrepreneurial kind of like you know organization was on campus as well. I was part and parcel a member of it, and uh, what else? Yeah, and as well church. So church has been has been a thing. So I've been I've been I've been involved in it. Yeah. So these are the, the things and activities which I do a part of doing my uh, other you know my academics. So then, um, how did does your typical day look um how does your actually how does your typical week look um are you quite busy do you have a bit of free time um how do you work around scheduling your time and all of that yeah when you're home it's different but when you're on campus as well it's a different story <laughs> so when i'm home because when I'm at home there's a lot of things to do but nevertheless I prioritize as well my academics because I'm still doing my research, my research thesis. Yeah. So I'm work, still working on it and I have to possibly submit and complete by this year. So because of this covid thing and lockdowns, a lot of things changed and as well as for us who are staying in rural areas, it's a challenge to have, you know, a better connection. I might be doing other stuff like uh, on the internet, researching a lot of lot of stuff, looking at other stuff what someone can do and explore, you know, since education is something which possibly I prioritize in my life so uh, i'm still looking at opportunities to further my studies possibly in a different you know in a different field than what i'm doing now to, just to match the world the world of academics and get more perspective and understanding so um when you are just feeling a lot of pressure and you're tired there's just a lot of work going on what would you say is your go to coping mechanism and i have realized that the more i get more pressure i panic a lot and then i'm not doing it anything so as for me the best thing is either i go for jogging uh, it's either i pray or it's either i sleep 
Yeah. So if I, I sleep, then I know that I will wake up refreshed. A lot of uh, the thinking in my mind will have calmed down the nervous and everything. And I will wake up and do whatever I have to do. So those are kind of three things that possibly I do. It's either I pray, either I sleep, or I go for jogging. Oh, yeah. So we're actually um, almost at the end. I just have one more question for you. What advice would you give to the youth? Okay. Uh, um, what I would say is that as much as you know, we are surrounded by not favorable conditions in life, one way or the other, and we all go through stuff. You know, we might not be, and we one or the other coming from different backgrounds. But at the end of the day, all of us we have choices to make. Sometimes our choices might be influenced by different things and by a lot of a lot of stuff that happens around us, by peers, by people, by situations, and all those things and stuff. But at the end of the day, we still have that control of making those kind of choices. So we all have choices and. Our choices. One, one, one of the most of the things that I usually say is that you, you, you make the decision, but you don't choose the, the outcomes of your choices. So that's the difficult part about making choices in life. You no, know? you choose, but you don't choose the results. So the results are automatic because of the decision that you have made. So it would be very much wise for each and every person in any any part and aspect of your life academic you know it comes to work finances relationships uh, your faith every part of your life you know you just have to make informed and wise decisions because those decisions they determine where you're going you know you will make choices but it, it's the same thing you know you choose you just choose and decide that you want to go jobbing and then what next then get a get a taxi to job it's your decision which take you there but you can't go where you did not say that you're going so you just have to be, you know, that's one of the things I would say. Jesus Christ once said that, let your no be no and let your yes be yes. So you need to be so much firm and strong when it comes to making choices. So don't, don't be swayed by the, the trends and what is happening. Just choose and do what you want yourself, you want, you want to achieve. So you have the power to make, you know, life-changing decisions in your life. So and never allow anything to pressure.